Our today's topic of discussion is hyperopia. Hyperopia is also known as farsightedness or hypermetropia. It is an ocular condition in which the refracting power of the eye causes light rays entering the eye to have a focal point that is posterior to the retina while accommodation is maintained in a state of relaxation. Visual acuity is better at far e six meters, distances than at near e meters, distances. Significant hyperopia is defined as any degree of hyperopia sufficient to cause symptoms prompting clinical attention. Hyperopia may be classified by structure and or function of the eye. Simple hyperopia is due to decreased axial length or decreased converging power of cornea, lens, and or media, flattened cornea, decreased curvature, increased thickness of lens, etc. Pathologic hyperopia is due to atypical development, trauma, or disease of the eye, i.e. cataract, microphthalmia, nanophthalmia, aniridia, etc. Functional hyperopia is due to paralysis of accommodation. If affected, functional hyperopia is usually present at birth. Drugs, such as cycloplegics, can also cause a transient hyperopia. Hyperopia may also be categorized by the degree of refractive error, low hyperopia as plus 2.00 d or less, moderate hyperopia ranges from plus 2.25 to plus 5.00 d, and high hyperopia as plus 5.25 d or more. High hyperopia may be associated with blurring of the optic disc margin, known as pseudopapiedema. It can be differentiated from true papilledema by the presence of normal caliber vasculature and normal appearing juxtaposed retina. Hyperopia may also be classified by the role of accommodation to visual functioning. Facultative hyperopia is hyperopia that can be overcome by accommodation whereas absolute hyperopia cannot be overcome by accommodation. Total hyperopia is the sum of facultative and absolute hyperopia. Hyperopia may also be categorized based upon the outcome of non-cycloplegic and cycloplegic refractions. Manifest hyperopia is determined with non-cycloplegic refraction whereas latent hyperopia is determined with cycloplegic refraction. The magnitude of hyperopia is the sum of manifest and latent hyperopia. Most commonly, the patient may experience decreased visual acuity or squinting at near distances. Strabismus, which is most commonly recognized in childhood, can be a sign of a concomitant hyperopia. Anisometropia may also be noted on visual acuity exam or red reflex testing. Accommodation typically enables younger patients to overcome facultative and latent hyperopia. Asthenopia eye strain and or eye pain is commonly reported and is commonly associated with headaches due to close work such as reading, writing, or computer work. Accommodative dysfunction may result as the eye is no longer capable of accommodating to focus light onto the retina. Binocular dysfunction may also be a symptom of hyperopia. Light rays and light particles entering the eye are converged at a point posterior to the retina while accommodation is maintained in a state of relaxation. The magnitude of hyperopia is determined by the diopteric power of converging lenses required to advance the focal point of light onto the retinal plane. Visual acuity screening is recommended to detect hyperopia as well as other eye conditions. The gold standard for visual acuity testing is to use the Snellen chart using manifest and cycloplegic refraction. The difference between cycloplegic hyperopia and manifest non-cycloplegic hyperopia is latent hyperopia. Subjective refraction can be performed with a visual acuity chart at far distance 20 feet or 6 meters and near distance 1 foot or 0.33 meters. These screenings typically are performed by teachers, primary care physicians, e.g. pediatricians, family physicians, etc., optometrists, and or ophthalmologists. The charts used for visual acuity screening include, but are not limited to, Snellen, Allen, HOTV, Tumbling E, etc. Objective refraction can be performed using an autorefraction machine or retinocopy. This first uses rays to measure at what distance an object is focused on the retina. Retinoscopy is the method preferred in babies and children. It requires a cycloplegic, retinoscope, and a series of lenses or a foropter to determine when light rays are focused onto the retinal plane. The tester neutralizes the movement of the reflected light with one of the lenses in the series. Orbital tumors, serous elevation of the retina, posterior scleritis, presbyopia, hypoglycemia, cataracts, and or post-refractive surgery may present in a similar fashion to hyperopia. 
The standard and safest treatment for symptomatic hyperopia is corrective lenses. Mild hyperopia does not need treatment. Hyperopic correction can be achieved by glasses lenses, contact lenses, or refractive surgery. The lenses required to correct hyperopia are convex lenses that converge light rays entering the eye to bring the focal point of the eye onto the retina. Glasses lenses are tolerated better in babies and children. Contact lenses are typically not preferred until adolescence or later, however the decision is based on the responsibility level of the patient or caregiver. A survey of practitioners revealed a common threshold for treatment intervention of hyperopia was 3.00d to 5.00d of asymptomatic hyperopia in children at age. Refractive surgery is typically not preferred until the refractive error of the eye has stabilized and growth of the eye has stopped, which typically occurs in the third decade of life. Surgical options for hyperopia include thermal laser keratoplasty TLK, conductive keratoplasty CK, spiral hexagonal keratotomy excimer laser, clear lens extraction with intraocular lens implantation or phacic intraocular lens implantation. Young children ages 0 to 10 with uncomplicated low to moderate hyperopia usually do not require intervention. With aging, loss of accommodation causes visual acuity to decrease and hyperopia to worsen. Decreased quality of life is common with hyperopia. There may also be a decrease in the ability to learn and develop within normal limits when vision is poor. Hyperopia that is not fully compensated with accommodation will force the eye into convergence and an esotropia crossed eyes will develop. Amblyopia can be another complication of hyperopia. Monocular amblyopia or binocular amblyopia may result. Levels greater than 1.00d of hyperopic anisometropia and 5.00d of isometric hyperopia are considered amblyogenic. Accommodative esotropia, acute angle closure glaucoma, and strabismus may also result from hyperopia.